James, I want to thank you for joining us at Command Opera. Thank it you. It has been uh, uh, really something to get a hold of you because you've been very busy, uh, you know, recording this. But I'm really glad that we've uh, had the opportunity to finally speak and talk about this new work that you're appearing in, that you're starring in, uh, called The Inventor. Now, this is being put on by the Calgary Opera. January 29th, and this is the new masterpiece by Bramwell Tovey and John Morell, uh, which is based on uh, on uh, some some events that took place in the 1800s. Ergo, why you were dressed this way? I must tell you that yes. costume is uh, oh, that's that's pretty cool. For <laughs> yes, this is a wonderful piece, and it's a true story, and it's a story that has to be told over and over again because it was known as the crime of the century. This man, Sandy Keith, also known, known as Thomas, William Thomas, Thomas King, um, he was the nephew of the great Alexander Keith, who was the great uh, brewery maestro uh, from Nova Scotia and the mayor of Nova Scotia. And we all know of Alexander Keith in Canadian history and North American history. But Sandy Keith had his time in history as well, and he was considered the crime of the century. He was a murderer, he was a con artist, and he was a spy for the Confederacy. And people tend to forget these characters of history, and I think they're so human that we need to go back to them. And I'm so glad that the creative team of Calgary Opera and Bramwell Tovey and John Morell has decided to recapture this character in this opera. And it's a wonderful piece. I'm extremely excited about it. And how did, uh, how did they come to this piece itself? I mean, the work itself uh, of the story, how did Bramwell Tovey come to this? Well, I'll tell you, it's very interesting, because just yesterday I, I asked Bramwell this, and he said he saw an article in the National Post that had stated this character in great detail in the book called The Dynamite Fiend, and he was asked by Calgary Opera to, to uh, co collaborate an opera with John Morell being the librettist, and he, he looked at this article and he read about the deeds of this character and how how just pure evil he was, and yet how charismatic he was. How could a man this evil make so many friends, get so much money, and travel the world and, and invent himself over and over again and deceive so many people? How could he get away with this? And Bram Tovey said that this is my opera. When he read this article, he said, this is my opera. And that's how it, that was three years ago, and they've worked very hard in the last three years to, to perfect a, a libretto which has incredible flavors of the southern, you know, crust and craft, these words that we don't use anymore, and incredible flavors of the, of the, the 19th century. And it's a very real opera, and it's very, very, very dated. But the set is behind me here, and this is the miniature version of the set, and it's very modern, this set. Everything inside each one of these boxes is very, very of the, of the style of the day. But this is the dreamscape of Sandy Keith, going from his memories of all the evil deeds that he has done throughout his life to the point where he kills himself at the end of the opera. I hate to give it away, but there it is. <laughs> well, okay. Well, you know, we weren't sure whether he was going to die or not, but now we know. Now, having said that... Uh, Let's talk about the musical styles of this work at this time. Because it takes place in the 18th century, you know, many uh, people who attend the opera, they're always very concerned about new works. Will it have a melodic line? Will it be one of those crashing, banging sort of <laughs> musical lines that, that, quite frankly, offend a lot of North American audiences? Now, in speaking with you uh, a while back, you indicated that parts of it had sort of a Straussian feel, uh, there was some sort of incorporation of jazz, ragtime, you know, uh, piece, musical styles that were part of the period. Yes. It, it's incredibly lyric, this piece, and it's got all these wonderful motifs that, that every character has a motif. It's very Wagnerian in that sense. I hear, I hear a lot of Strauss in it. I hear the intensity of Britain in terms of the harmonies and the, the, the punctuation of the rhythm. I hear a lot of Britain. And like any good opera, whenever I go back to a piece or I hear someone else sing their aria for a third or fourth time, something new comes to me. And this is what gives modern works their legs. You know, it's very difficult for a singer to learn modern works. I've learned quite a few in, in, in the past. And 
it's difficult to sing these works that, that aren't as lyric as the ear of the audience tends to say. <laughs> so, you know, put the audience assured that this piece is incredibly lyric and there's wonderful, wonderful qualities of a beautiful line that I sing duets with the, the woman that the women that I love, <laughs> the two women that I love. And there's wonderful lines, there's wonderful lines of humanity, of, of, of when I'm contemplating death, I'm contemplating my deeds, there's, there's wonderful harmonies. But as you mentioned to me before when we first started talking about this piece, and you sensed that there was a sense of ragtime, there is this sense of, of early, early rhythm of ragtime and jazz and, and swing time, and when we meet the southerners, there's, there's, there's wonderful elements of that that come up very, very strongly in the piece. And there's a wonderful waltz. Well, Judy Force sings her aria of disgust of me, who's going to marry her, her daughter. Uh, there's a disgust aria, and I'm waltzing around Judy Force as she's singing her aria, looking at my shoes. Now, you know summer. what? <laughs> that is something that you don't hear very often, a disgust aria. And I, I'm glad that <laughs> Opera finally has another one, uh, because there aren't too many of them. But by bringing in Judith Force, you now... Uh, start talking about uh, some of the other artists who are within this work. Why don't you tell us about the characters, the roles, and who's playing them? Well, we have assembled a cast of great Canadian singers. Um, there's Roger Honeywell, Judith Force, Aaron Wall, Laura Whalen, Philip Enns, a great bass and a great singer. And these singers all play amazing characters. Roger Honeywell plays Smoot which is the gentleman that follows me around after taking his money and, and reinventing myself in a new place. He follows me around at every junction of my life and makes my life a living hell. And this is why I have to keep reinventing myself to get away from him because I stole, you know, $60,000 of his money at that time, which was quite a bit of money in the, in the 1800s. That is Smoot, the tenor role. Judy Force plays the mother of my second love interest, Cecile's mother. And... She is a very, very interesting woman in the sense that when she sees me for the first time, she sights me up and she knows exactly who I am. It takes one to know one with Louise. And Judy Force plays her amazingly. Um, it's a very, very interesting character. And throughout the opera, we're battling wits and we're, we're, we're battling the, the affections of, of her daughter and my wife. Um, my first wife, which is Mary, is played by Laura Whalen. And she is my servant. At one point I say, uh, you all know Mary Clifton. She keeps my premises tidy. And all the Southerners laugh, you know. And So she's a woman that, that, that tends to my needs both physically and emotionally. But I'm never captivated by her because she doesn't make me rise to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, the heights of Alexander Keith Sr. I want to become this powerful man. And she doesn't do that for me. So when I find out she's pregnant, I leave. Um, I do a very evil deed and I leave and how I contemplate that is by saying to myself you are better without me you will you will find better things you don't want to live in my sin you don't want to live in my problems and so he's a very determined man this 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 man so that's my first wife my second wife played by Aaron Wall is Cecile and she comes in and the minute I see her I move and I dance with her and we be you know and, and, and then the next scene we're married essentially and she is everything to me because she is how I can gain the crust of authority in terms of, of society. I, um, I, if I marry her, if I can hang on to her, then I have gained that level of power in society. So at the end, when she leaves me and the mother comes back and she takes the children who I adore, it's interesting, the first, I had children with the first wife and I leave them alone, I leave them behind and I always wonder what, what is happening to them and I have, an, I have an aria about that actually. And the second wife, I just adore the children and this is written in the, in the book and in, in several uh, uh, history facts about Sandy Key, how he could just completely change his whole demeanor and, and all of a sudden in, in, endure the family, adore the family life. And. Um, yeah, so that, that makes up the, the kind of the combined characters and how I reinvent myself throughout them all. Yeah.